it's the end of the day, Monday, July 24th, and the market didn't do exactly what I expected it to do today. Now, what did I expect it to do today? Well, I made a video earlier where I said I expected the market to possibly, probably, close the gap, which was down here at 45.64, and it was likely that prices would even hit a little lower at the calculated trading zone at 45.62. Now, the trading zone is this rectangle that I put on my chart, and I do so every day, and it's based on George Taylor's calculations. The Taylor book method, or Taylor trading technique, is one of the tools that I use that I consider important in determining where the market is likely to trade. Now, in the 20 years that I've been trading, I've never been able to know exactly where the market is going to go. But I do know, thanks to Taylor, where the market is likely to go. And so, I use Taylor together with price action. Now, Taylor tells me a few things that give me expectations of where the market is likely to go. And three key pieces of information that Taylor gives me is the upper limit or resistance for the day, the lower limit or support for the day, the range between them, and these are three areas of interest that I follow when I trade. Now today, I thought that the prices might trade within the Taylor trading zone completely. So these are my expectations. And I also watch price action to see if my expectations are met by prices. So let's see where prices started out today. Prices opened right in the middle of the calculated trading zone at 45.75. And instead of moving down to close the gap at 45.64, they traded up to 45.85 which coincidentally is my Taylor resistance. Now prices hung around there for a while. And so, although the prices didn't close the gap, which was my highest expectation, prices basically didn't violate the Taylor resistance level at 45.85. So at this point, a low risk trade to the downside was successful. The important thing is the target this target level at 45.65, and the fact that prices met it and didn't violate it. The logical move was to trade to the downside, and that downside trade worked out. Now, where were the prices going to go from there? I have no idea where prices are going to go. I know where they may go. I know where the targets are. This is a target. Now, the prices never reached down to fill the gap or the target down at 45.62, but they went back up. And where did they go back up to? the calculated trading resistance at 45.85. They violated it and they traded back down and they actually closed right at 45.85. Amazing, right? They closed at 45.85, a calculated number. So let's go back to expectations in terms of price action. The price action gives me a thought of expectations that the prices are gonna either fulfill the Taylor trading zone or not. In addition to the resistance and support that I spoke about, the Taylor trading zone also gives me a range for the day. And that range today was 23 points. Now, how does that help if prices don't trade within the trading zone? If the range is 23 points and I match the range to the intraday low, I should find where prices are going to reach a high for the day. So to do that, I take my calculated trading zone, I copy it and I make a copy and I move it up to match the intraday low. And so an expectation would be that prices were going to trade to the transposed trading zone at 45.92. Well, what do you know? So this was a new expectation based on Taylor's range. Not the resistance, not the support, but the range. So price action, knowing where the targets are likely to be, seeing whether the prices are going to adhere to those targets or violate those targets, gives a pretty good idea of whether to make a trade and if so, in what direction prices will move. So that's my video for today. Trade safely, use lots of patience. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Marv Eisen for Timeless Dollar Trading Academy.